All righty. Okay, everyone. Well, welcome. So um, this is the intro to precepts class. This is the Ruth precepts, and I'm super glad everyone is here on um, this call. There's a lot of us, <laughs> um, so I'm praying that the technology works and I don't freeze too much um, because that happens sometimes. Um, so the way this is going to work is I hope that each of you were able to print out the handouts. Um, that's the way it's going to work is there's going to be handouts that you'll need to print off ahead of time. And I am going to share my screen here in just a little bit with some slides. Um, and what this first part is going to be is we're just going to do an intro to how to do precepts. Um, raise your hand on your screen if you're brand new and you've never done a precept before. Just kind of do one of these. Awesome. Well, welcome because you're on for an awesome journey. And um, that's what this class, this first class is all about is I'm going to walk through how to do precepts. And um, then after we do that part, then what we're going to do is we'll unmute ourselves and then we're going to do introductions. So I like to go ahead and just get started in the class now um, because everybody's all anxious to hear. And then um, about at the halfway point, then we will um, do a small introduction of, of just who we are in the class. So the class actually goes from 7 to 9 p.m. Okay. Okay. Um, so, like I said, my name's Denise. Um, I, I'll just tell you just a little, if I haven't met a lot of you, um, I have um, been doing precepts. This precept is really near and dear to my heart because this is the very first precept I ever taught. Um, and uh, I, so I love this one. So I'm really excited for those of you, this is your first one because this is the best one personally that I think. And because it's only three lessons, you're really able to develop some really good disciplines and habits in Bible study. Um, so I'm, I'm happy that you're, you're doing this one with me. And a uh, little bit about me. I, um, I was born and raised in California. So I've been married to my husband, Darren. We just celebrated 25 years in January. And we went on a cruise right before the cruise industry. I, we may never see it again. Who knows? But I, was, I went on a cruise and it was awesome. Um, I have two kids. I have um, my son that is a sophomore at Colorado Christian. And then I have a daughter who is 16 and she is a junior at Memorial. And I, um, yeah, and I just, I have a great passion for teaching and I have a great passion for nonprofit work and I'm a small business owner and I just do a little bit of everything, whatever God calls me to do. And I, I felt called to teach this class. And so here I am and, and know that you've been prayed for and that you're supposed to be in this class as well, because I prayed that God would put just the people that he wants to be on Zoom and the ones that he wants in person to take this class. So I'm really happy and excited that you are here. So let's talk a little bit about precepts and what it is, because I'm sure many of you who are brand new have probably heard about precept and we're curious about it and that's probably why um, you're here on this on this call so I'm going to go to my shared screen here so we can start to um, look at our slides but basically precept is a shortened word for precept upon precept and it's an inductive Bible study method written by K Arthur so everything that I'm going to talk about I'm not making it up it actually comes from her book so if you don't have this book it's a great resource it's called how to study the Bible. You can actually get it off Amazon. It's one of the one books you can get from her and you can get it prime and it'll come pretty quick. The workbooks you cannot get because you have to be, anyway, I, there's a reason why, but this one you can get. So everything that we're gonna talk about is from this book. So I just wanted to give the author credit where author credit needs to be due. So these are not my words, these are hers. But the inductive study method is something that no matter what Bible study you do moving forward, whether the you, precepts is the only one that you take and you don't ever do it again, the, um, the disciplines and the things that you learn from this study, you can take this into any Bible study moving forward. And that's what I do. That's how I study the Bible is exactly what we're going to talk about today in this lesson. So let's talk about what it means to study the Bible inductively. So I'm going to share my screen with you here. Um, let me get my, oh, where did it go? 
um, desktop. Okay, I had it all set here. Um, files, there we go. Okay. I'm gonna try and share my screen with you. Did that work? No, it didn't. Okay, come on. Okay. All right, it's not working. Okay, who printed out the handout that it looks like a little thing like this? That's got, okay, good. That's what we're gonna walk through then. <laughs> okay, for some reason it's not sharing. I'll have to work on that. Okay, so, um, so there's three benefits to um, studying the Bible inductively. And, and what inductive study does is it, it doesn't tell you what the Bible means or what you should believe, but instead it's gonna teach you a method of how to study God's word. So it can be applied to any portion of scripture at any time of your life. And really the main requirement is learning to slow down. So precepts is not hard. And if you've heard that rumor, if you say, if someone's like, hey, what Bible study are you taking? I'm taking precepts. This is what everyone, oh my gosh, that's so hard. It is not hard. What's hard about it is that you have to slow down and take time. And let's all be honest, we all don't like to take the time. It, taking time is a discipline that you need to discipline yourself to slow down, take your time. We, in our very quick, fast pace, want to be spoon fed all the information. Give it to me now, just give it to me now. I don't have time to study it. But this is what the inductive study method will do for you is it's going to teach you to slow down. So it is not hard at all. It just requires you to slow down and take your time. Um, the main requirement for studying the Bible inductively is um, slow down. And the Bible, it's your primary source. That's it. You don't need anything else. Isn't that great? You just need this book right here, the Bible. Okay. So I love that. So there's three benefits to inductive Bible studying. When you slow down, you get to see the truth for yourself and you're going to discern what that truth means. And then you're going to apply that truth to your life. And so that was my prayer for all of you jumping on today is that I hope the reason you're taking Bible study is so that you don't just have head knowledge up here, but that you're able to take the truth and apply it to your life. Otherwise, it's just head knowledge and it just, it doesn't, it really doesn't benefit you or anyone else, but when you apply it, so that's what precepts is going to do. And the Bible alone is your primary source of information and prayer is what's going to help you understand and interpret the scriptural truths so that you can be transformed. So all of us who are believers in Jesus um, the Bible tells us that we have a helper. Who is that helper? It's the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit is our resident teacher. And so you to know God, it's not some mystical thing that he wants to keep truth from you. He has his word and he has his spirit that's going to teach us. And I just think that's really encouraging. You don't have to go to seminary to know God's word. If you're a pastor teacher, yeah, they're gifted and they go to seminary for this extra training, but that's not required for us to learn God's word. He gives us his word and his spirit to teach us. So I want to encourage you in that. So wherever you are in your journey, um, you have a resident teacher inside of you who is going to teach you. And all you got to do is ask. And that's why it starts with prayer. So before we start any more from here, we're going to open in prayer. So I'm going to open in prayer. And I'm just going to ask the Lord to um, bless this time as we learn about precepts. So pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just praise you and I thank you for this evening. I thank you for all the ladies that are here on this call. And Lord, I pray that you would open up our eyes to your truth. Help us to see your truth. Uh, be with any nerves or any anxiety. Um, that any ladies have about um, inductive Bible study. And my prayer for them is that your word will just come alive to them through um, doing Ruth. And that, Lord, this is just going to lead to 
just more truth and, and just a great um, joy and fervency for your word. So I pray that you bless this evening and you bless our ladies here on the call and then those that are not able to make it um, and just be with this evening, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay, so there's three components to inductive Bible study. Um, the first one is observation. The second is interpretation. And then the third is application. So we're going to kind of go over what each one of those components means. So the first one, observation, it basically is going to ask the question, well, what does the passage say? And this is a huge foundation that has to be laid if we want to interpret scripture accurately. So Kay always says, you will know what you know, which means she's going to use observation worksheets, which are scriptures. So whatever's on that scripture and you observe, that's what we're going to know for that chapter. And she'll help you out with that in your homework. Okay. Um, the next one is um, to study the, the, um, the context. So in observation, um, the word context means that which goes with the text. So context is the environment or the setting of the scripture that we're going to look at. So for us, we're going to be looking through the book of Ruth. That's going to be our context. All right. And a lot of times this is, a, this is what people forget about when they study the Bible is they forget about the context of what they're reading. Okay. And again, we're talking about observation. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the obvious mm -hmm. when we're doing observation. So I like to use the example of a puzzle. How many of y'all did a gazillion puzzles during quarantine? And we're big puzzle people at my house. Yes. Okay. So when you put a puzzle together and you've opened up the box, what's usually the first thing that you do in a puzzle? Exactly. You, you get the edges, right? And the ends. And why is that? Because it's obvious. You know it's an end piece because it doesn't have all the different holes or the, um, the little knobs to it. So it's obvious. So that's the same idea. I want you to think about um, observation as the first part of your puzzle, which is the border of your puzzle. So what I mean by that is you're going to be looking for things like repeated words, um, characters, settings. These are things that you're going to look at when you observe. And this is what takes the most time is observation. Um, we don't, and a lot of times what happens is we want to read it and then jump straight to either interpretation or application and not spend the time doing the observation. Okay. And again, in the homework, she's going to walk you through this. You're, so you're going to be doing all three of these steps. All right. Okay. So when the next thing after looking for the obvious is you want to read the text with purpose. So you want to look for things like, um, repeated words or, um, you know, settings or time. These are all things that you want to look for and she'll help you with that in the homework. And then the next thing you want to do is, um, during observation is you want to ask the five W's and the H's. Okay. And yes, this is elementary education. I was a kindergarten teacher for eight years. So we're going back to elementary ed and y'all remember what were the five W's and the H's when you were learning how to do comprehension? It was who, what, where, when, why, and then the H is how. Okay, so I have these little lines underneath and you can write those in there. So this is the one interactive part that you get. You can write those five W's and H's, okay? So that's what we're doing in observation. And as you're reading the text, you're just asking yourself, okay, well, who wrote it? All right, well, what are the main events? When was it written? Well, where was this done or where was this said? Why was this written or why was something mentioned in this chapter? And then, well, how does this happen? What, what, what truth is being illustrated? Okay. And you're going to be kind of asking yourself these questions as you go through the observation. Now, it's really important to remember that you may not find all five of the W's and the H's in every single chapter. So you might find two 
W's in chapter one, and then you might find the H in chapter four. So don't panic if you're like, I gotta have all of them in every chapter. It's more of the idea of you're, ob you're observing and you're asking those questions, okay? All right, and then um, you wanna identify, again, we're in observation, you wanna identify the type of literature that you're reading. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but scripture has different types of literature. We have um, poetry, which are your Psalms. We have a um, Song of Songs. We have wisdom books like Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. We have um, prophetic books that are doing prophecy. We have letter books, we have gospels, um, and then we have historical narrative. So we have different types of literature within the Bible. So you wanna identify what kind of literature you're reading because you're gonna read a letter a little bit different than you are going to read a historical narrative. Now the good news is um, you're doing a historical narrative, Ruth. So it's great because it's gonna go chapter by chapter in a sequence. So this part of observation will be a little bit easier for you. That's why if this is your first precept class, Ruth is a really good one because it's, it's not like prophecy. Prophecy can jump back and forth and you gotta kind of think about these different things. This is just gonna be a nice historical narrative, okay? And then um, you wanna identify segment divisions. And basically what that means is when a passage or a chapter has changed ideas, and she does that for you actually, and I'll show you in your workbook, when you see a bold um, number next to the scripture, she's letting you know that that's a new segment. So it's um, segments aren't real big with historical narratives, but when you get into prophecy and some of the letters, segment divisions can be really helpful, okay? And so you won't have to worry too much about it with Ruth. Okay, so that's observation. And this is the one you're gonna take the most time in. Okay, so this is the outside of your puzzle piece, okay? Okay, um, so the next one in inductive study is we go observation and then second is interpretation. And interpretation is asking the question, okay, well, what does the passage mean, okay? And this is really important. This is why we wanna do the observation first. And we don't wanna rush interpretation because otherwise it becomes about what you think or feel or what other people have said instead of what God's word has said. And when I talk about interpretation, I'm, we're reminded that there really is only one interpretation and that's God's interpretation. There are many applications to his word, but there's one interpretation. So that's why we're getting to the observations so we can get to what God is saying in his word. Oftentimes people think, oh, there's lots of interpretations oh, but you can only apply it this way. So we actually kind of get that mixed up, okay? So in interpretation, we really wanna make sure that um, we are not rushing this, that we've done our observation. So when we get to interpretation, we're gonna find out, okay, what is God saying? What is he really getting to in this passage? And I love what Kay says. She uses this phrase, let scripture interpret scripture. And that's what we're gonna do in interpretation. Okay, is we're gonna let the scripture interpret scripture. Um, so there's seven principles, and I have that in your notes, of things to help you in interpretation, okay? And the first one is always let the context rule. Context, 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 okay? Um, the example I like to give about this is, um, right now I hear this a lot, you probably have to, uh, Matthew 7, 1, that says, do not judge lest you be judged, okay? Have you heard people talk about that and they'll, they'll throw that verse out um, and they've completely forgotten about the context of what was said before and what was said after. So you wanna make sure you keep context always in mind when you're looking at and interpreting scripture, which comes to number two, you don't wanna isolate verses. You always wanna seek the full, counsel of God. That's why context always rules. And scripture number three will never contradict scripture. Okay. And if you think it does, then that means you need to go back to your observations because God tells us in his word that he does not lie. And so if you think, well, that contradicts itself, well, then you need to go back into observations. You may need to do some more, um, let scripture interpret scripture, 
seek the whole counsel of his word, okay? Um, then the number four thing with interpretation is you want to base your doctrine on clear, repeated teachings in scripture. Again, letting that context rule, um, trying not to pull out, again, isolated verses like Matthew 7, 1, pull that verse out, isolate it, use it without using the full context of what's going on, okay? Because we know in other parts of scripture, God does talk about judgment, okay? So again, we want to seek that full counsel of God and make sure we're basing our doctrine on clear, repeated teachings. You are not going to find this problem in Ruth um, because it's, it's a pretty clear book. But when you start getting into books with prophecy and letters, when we're dealing with some doctrinal issues, that's why we want to keep this in mind with interpretation. And again, because this is going to be something that is going to take you through to what any Bible study you do moving forward. And then number five, you want to interpret scripture literally. Understand that there are some literary styles and there are some figurative language and it can be used, but we want to take the scripture and, and look at it literally as what it's saying. And again, in Ruth, because it's a historical narrative, the words that we're going to look at, they're going to be literal words. They're not going to have allegories and metaphors. Uh, again, you'll see that a lot. Revelation's a big one where it's got a lot of figurative language in there. We're not going to see that too much in Ruth. And then you want to look for the author's intended meaning of the passage. That's number six. Um, again, this is with interpretation. And then number seven, um, when you have done the observation and then you get to interpretation, you can check your conclusions by using reliable commentaries. They really do have a place in Bible study. But what do most of us do first? We go to the commentary first. We want to find out what somebody else said. And you know what? Commentaries have a great place. And, and I love commentaries because I want to make sure, okay, I'm not making stuff up. You know, am I, am I kind of in line with what someone else is saying? Um, but again, you have the Holy Spirit who wants you to learn his word. And so we always want to make sure that um, we don't go straight to the commentaries. So in her workbook and in the homework, she will say at times when you finish doing the interpretation and you um, done cross references, then she'll say, hey, go ahead and check a commentary. And I'll show you in the workbook. She actually has some recommended commentaries. So if you're like, I, I don't even have a commentary, she has some recommended ones in the book that we'll go over and you can use them or, or another commentary if, if you like. But just don't promise me that you're not going to go to the commentary first, okay? That you go to it last when she's told you to in the homework, okay? Yeah? Okay. Very good. Um, some other tools that we're going to use with um, interpretation is word studies. And we are going to do some word studies, which is awesome. And basically what word studies are is you're studying the original language of the text. Because it was written in Hebrew for the Old Testament and then Koine Greek for the New Testament. And a lot of times in English, um, that kind of gets mixed a little bit. Okay, the other thing we're going to do is um, with interpretation is cross-referencing. So again, letting scripture interpret scripture. And um, I've got some online resources um, that I put in the back that I'll, I'll show you um, that you can use that are good resources for you when you do the word studies, which is great. And hopefully I can get my shared screen up here to show you that. Um, and then sometimes maps and dictionaries um, she'll have in your homework. She may have a map for you. That's another really good one to use when you're doing interpretation. All right. Um, all right. So the first part of our inductive study is observation. The second one is interpretation. And then the third and the last is application. Okay. And application just is asking the question, well, how does the meaning of the passage apply to me? So um, a key verse in this is 2 Timothy 3, 15 through 17. So I would love for somebody to unmute themselves. And if you can read um, that passage for us, that can get us into the context of application.
I guess I it can yell it out. <laughs> okay. Um, I've got the ERV version. Okay. Where am I starting? 15. Um, okay, sorry, just making sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah. You've done the Holy Scriptures since you were a child. These scriptures are able to make you wise. And that wisdom which all scripture is given by God, and all scripture is useful for teaching and for showing people what is wrong in their lives. It is useful for correcting faults and teaching the right way to live. Using the scriptures, those who serve God will be prepared and will have everything they need to do every good work. Excellent. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, so this is the key. This is the key to application. Um, so if, if you're an Awana, this is an Awana verse you'll learn over and over again. A big time Awana person right here. So yeah. Um, so the teaching means that when he's talking about this in, in scripture, that doctrine is absolute truth. So I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but there really is absolute truth. Um, and, and so that's what he's telling us in 2 Timothy 3 is, is my word is absolute truth. And reproof is acknowledging where you're wrong in thought or behavior. Correction means confession to God and forsaking what is wrong. Training in righteousness means that the Bible is the handbook for living. No other book is needed. And I, that one is really near and dear to my heart, to be honest. Um, being, an being an education and being a teacher, education is wonderful. I am not in any way gonna knock that. But if there's any book that you really need to know, this is it. This is the handbook for life. Whatever situation you're in, whatever it is, whatever decision, this book, the Bible, is the handbook for living. So know it and understand it. And you've got the resident teacher inside of you, the Holy Spirit, to teach you. So that one is always very encouraging to me. And really the ultimate goal in my prayer, this is why you're here, and this is why you're doing Bible study, is, um, to have a transformed life and a deep abiding relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, that, that's, that's my prayer for you is, um, that's why I do Bible study and that's my prayer of why you're here in this class so that you can be transformed and have an even deeper personal relationship with Jesus as a result of studying his word. I have a little cute little acronym on your page. It says application. So I love this. I actually print this out and put it in my Bible. Um, and in my workbooks, anytime I'm doing a Bible study. And I love the little acronym because there's questions you can ask yourself as you're going through the study of Ruth. Um, the A is, is there an attitude to adjust? P, is there a promise to claim? Um, another P, is there a priority to change? L, is there a lesson to learn? I, is there an issue to resolve? C, is there a command to obey? A, is there an activity to avoid? T, is there a truth to believe? I, is there an idol to tear down? O, is there an offense to forgive? N, is there a new direction I need to take? Or S, is there a sin that needs to be confessed? So um, again, that's um, a great acronym. Again, I like to put in, just kind of ask myself those questions, okay? Um, and then one last little thing. Um, so we've gone through the inductive Bible study part. So the first one is observation. That's the one we're going to take our most time on. Two is interpretation. So after we build the frame, then we start building in our puzzle piece. We start doing the interpretation. Okay. And then the last one is application and we finish it all in and then the puzzle's all gone and done. And so when we're done um, at the end of August, you're going to have this beautiful puzzle finished of Ruth and some beautiful application and truths that you're gonna to get to take away from the study, okay? So I kind of gave it away a little bit, but um, just in case you weren't aware what type of literature Ruth is, um, it is a historical narrative. A lot of the Old Testament is historical narrative. So there's just a few things that I wrote down on your paper to just keep in mind when we're doing historical narratives. So whenever you go to do another Bible study and you know it's a historical narrative, then these are some, um, some guidelines that can help you. So first is um, you want to focus on observing people and events, okay? You also 
want to um, pay attention to time. So you're going to see some time and some um, things to time, and you just want to pay attention to that. You want to keep up with the location. You want to find out what's revealed and ask yourself what's revealed about God. That's what's beautiful about the Old Testament. God is always constantly revealing himself to us and to his people. You want to cover the book chapter by chapter. So that's what we're going to do in this historical narrative. We're just going to go from chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter four. You want to think about the book's message, theme, and main ideas. And then number seven, this is a really important one. Um, try not to spiritualize the story. Um, and I'll give you an example of this, uh, Gideon and the fleece. A lot of times people like to take that story and they like to spiritualize it. And they're like, I'm laying out my fleece, Lord. You know, um, but that's not always necessarily what that whole story was about. So just be really careful when you're doing historical narratives that we're not spiritualizing something that's not being said there in the context. So anyway, I'm just gonna say that about that. Um, that's just, again, good um, guidelines as you're doing historical narratives, okay? And then you can see down there at the bottom, I've got some resources and websites for precepts. Um, these sites are really good when she asks you to look up a word. Um, she's gonna say, okay, we're gonna do a word study. Look up this word and tell me what this word means. Um, my favorite one is the last one down at the bottom, the um, bible.org. That's my favorite resource. If you're an app person, the blue letter app is a really good one um, that you can use right off your phone. So I'll tell you that if you're a phone person and you like to look stuff up on your phone, that net Bible, that Bible.org, it won't work on your phone. It's not a mobile device. So it can only work on an iPad or a computer. You gotta be on your uh, either Safari or Google Chrome for that to work. But if you're an app person, um, that blue, um, blue letter is an app and you can use that one to look up words. Okay. And, um, yeah, so anyway, just to kind of like, but, and they're all free, so you don't have to pay for any of them. And um, it's really great to use. So again, no matter what study you do moving on, if you wanna look up a word and do a word study, then you can look those up, okay? All right. Okay, so now's the time when we're gonna do a little bit of some intros. So we can just kind of get to know who's on the call. Um, and so what I'd love to do, and I'll, I'll just kind of call, I'm, I'm going to go kind of in the order based on the participants if I have on my screen. And so when I call your name, just kind of unmute yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are. Um, you know, if, if you're married, if you're a grandmother, if you have kids, just something like that. And then, um, the question that you're going to answer is, are you a dog person or a cat person? Okay. So that's going to be the question. So I'll start it since I'm the one, I'll give you a little more time to think about that. But um, so y'all know my name's Denise. And um, so just, I told you a little bit about myself. Um, so I, I consider myself an honorary Texan. I told you I was born and raised in California, but I've lived here 15 years. So I feel like I'm now a true Texan. Um, and I am a, I'm a cat person. I have two cats and, um, my one cat has been rocking quarantine. Like she's living her best life right now. She loves it. My other cat is the killer of the home. She kills all the bunnies, rabbits, birds. Our neighborhood loves her. Yeah, so I'm a cat person. That's just me. Um, so anyway, how about, let's see. So Bobby, you're on my screen if you wanna go next. Hey, I'm Bobby. Um, I am not from anywhere because I'm an Air Force brat. Um, so I've lived all over the world and married an Air Force officer, so continue to live all over the world. I'm a widow, unfortunately, lost him in 2006. Um, no kids. And I'm a cat person, though I don't have any cats. I just don't like dogs, mainly because I'm allergic to most of them. Okay. Nice. Nice to meet you, Bobby. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we'll go with um, Carol Burke next. You're, on, you're the next one on my screen. There. I'm Carol Burke. I have three boys that are grown, of course, seven grandchildren. 
two of the sons live up in Colorado with four of my grandkids and I am married 47 years next week. Congratulations, yay. Awesome, thanks Carolyn. All right, I have, um, I have another, uh, Carolyn Powell. You wanna um, introduce yourself, Carolyn? Can you hear us? You're a dog person. I, yeah. Nice. Excellent. Okay. Um, I've got Amy. I've got you on my screen next. So. I'm Amy. Um, I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. I met my husband in Brazil at seminary, Bible seminary there. Um, I've lived in Texas for 13 years, though. We have quite the story of where we live. Um, and I have three children fifth grade, third grade, and first grade this year. And uh, we just became uh, missionaries. We're gonna go into ministry full time. So we're currently working on raising support for that. So, and I'm a cat person. Awesome, thank you. Okay, I've got Arlene next on my um, screen. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. All right, well, my name is Arlene, and uh, originally I was born in the Philippines, moved to the States after high school graduation, lived in LA for over 20 years, lived in Texas for about eight, and uh, now we're here in Colorado Springs for my husband's job. Um, we will also be celebrating 25 years next month. Yay. We were supposed to go, we were actually supposed to go to the uh, Israel and Jordan trip with the Frisco Bible group that obviously that's not happening. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, I, you know, we have, we have both and we have one dog and two cats and I, I like them both, but like, I do love my dog. I mean, she's my favorite. Okay. Nice. So, yeah. Thanks, Arlene. Yeah. Okay. I've got, um, Barbara, I've got you next on my um, screen. Okay, I'm Barbara Lacurdo, and I am originally from New York, lived there for like kind of half of my life, then moved to California, and I lived there for another half of my life, and I've been in Texas for three years. I have two children. One is still in California with his wife and two of my grandchildren, and the other one is here, uh, and it's Dana Wyatt, who a lot of you might know. And she also has her husband and two of my older grandchildren. I am married to Steve and it's been 48 years. And I guess what distinguishes me a little bit from all of you guys is that I am a Jewish believer. So I was actually raised in an Orthodox Jewish home and came to know Jesus about almost 40 years ago. So that's another a story in itself. And I'm more of a dog person for sure. I'm not a cat lover. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, I think next, it's funny, Zoom jumps everybody around. So like, if I seriously miss you, literally raise your hands. I'm like, I'm doing everything I can to go in order. The orderliness person in me, it's killing me. I'm like, oh, okay. But I do have Carol. I've got Carol next. Yeah. Hello, I'm Carol Johnson. Um, I have been married for 34 years and I have two children. One of them is um, a fifth year senior at Texas A&M and 
The other one is married and they just recently moved back to Texas. So I'm really enjoying that. And I'm a dog person. Okay, next on my screen is Erin Gilbreth. Hi, hey. <laughs> hey. Hi, I'm Denise's sister, Erin. <laughs> yeah, you can't from... tell us my sister. <laughs> <laughs> I am calling in from New York City, uh, where I'm a theater producer. And um, I have been married for almost 15 years. I have a son, and uh, I love all animals, but for city living, cats work best. <laughs> Um, Erin, can I please connect you with my daughter? She's a musical theater major. She's oh gonna my gosh, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's gonna be a senior this year and uh, actually going to uh, Eugene O'Neill Theater for the fall. Perfect. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> All right. Yay, Erin. Thanks. Okay, and then we have the other Erin, Erin Bailey. Um, you got y'all are like right next to each other. So, Erin, introduce yourself. Hey, uh, so yes, Erin Bailey. Um, I have been married to Bob Bailey for almost 11 years, and we have six kids. They're uh, 14, and then six, five, four, almost, well, almost two, and then six months. Um, and I'm not from Texas. Um, I moved here to marry Bob uh, from Seattle, and um, was born and raised there. Uh, we are dog people. Okay, nice. Excellent. Thanks, Erin. Okay, I have um, Christina is next on my screen. Hi, I'm Christina. I have been married now for almost 10 years, 10 years in October. We have a daughter who is going to enter third grade this year, and we are cat people. We like both, but we are cat people. Wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Christina. Okay, next I've got um, Lana. Lana, you're on, you're on my screen next. Okay, sorry I don't have a camera on my old computer, so you just have to look at my name. Sorry about that. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you, yes. Okay, okay yeah. Bob and I have been married 55 years, so we're excited about that. Ooh, congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Only through God's will. <laughs> We have two children, uh, we have eight grandchildren, we have one great grandson, and we're expecting another great grand whatever baby sometime maybe next February. So we're excited about that as well. Um, we probably, we, well we have, we've had cats and dogs, um, probably more of a, a cat person, but I like both. Okay, nice. All right, glad you're on. Thank you. Oh, yeah, okay, um, I've got Laura next on my screen. Hi. Hi everybody, I'm Laura Trail. I um, am a marketing director in the oil and gas um, industry. Um, I am a single mom of three kids. I have an eight-year-old son and three-year-old twin girls and they keep me pretty busy. So while uh, I love all animals right now, I'm just a kid person. <laughs> <laughs> Great, all right. Nice to meet you, Laura. You too. Okay, I've got um, Megan Hahn next on my screen. All right, so hi, I'm Megan and I am married to Brian Hahn and um, I grew up in Edmond, Oklahoma and Brian and I have been married for almost 15 years and we have a third grader, a kindergartner, and a three-year-old who's currently in my bathroom doing, I don't know what, she just shut the door. So I'm going to go check on that. So, but no, that's I understand. me. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Great to have you, Megan. Thanks. All right, I've got Rhonda. Um, she's on my screen next. You're on mute. You're still muted. Unmute. Okay, can you hear me? All right, my name is Rhonda Franklin and my husband is Sean. We've been married for 22 years. Um, we have our own business, so we both get to work from home together and it's awesome. 
lot of people wouldn't want to work with their husband, but I love my husband. We work well together. We have two daughters. One is a junior in high school and another one is starting middle school during all this coronavirus craziness. So um, let's see. I'm a dog person. We have two dogs and they keep wanting to get in my office. So I'm about to open my doors to let them in. So you'll probably meet them in a few minutes because they're going nuts. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. um, okay, next, I've got Tony Hahn. Hello. Hey, Tony. Um, I'm Tony Hahn, and my husband is Paul, and we have been married for 43 and a half years. Um, he is the tall, bald, and elder. <laughs> And um, I've got uh, two older girls and two grand girls, which are the love of my life, but I haven't been able to hug them in four months. So I'm very, very sad about that. Um, I lead Bible studies at church and I actually took Revelation as my first precept, which was probably not a great idea. And then I, I, the only other one I've done is Ruth. So I think I was at the, at the end of each scale, the longest study and the, one of the shortest studies. Um, but this remains one of my all all time five in my five best Bible studies in my whole life. Um, originally, I was also from New York, Barbara. I was born in Brooklyn, and then I moved to upstate New York, then I lived in Chicago, and then Paul and I moved down here in 83. So we both lived in this area the longest of anywhere else. Nice. So thanks, Tony. And Melinda. Hey, Melinda, you're just in time for the intros. <laughs> hey, is that what you guys have been doing? Um, we just did the so intro late. part of precepts, and then we're going to actually get into doing the workbook part. So you joined just in time. So yeah, but if you want to just, perfect. just what you're going to do, tell us just a little bit of your name and who you are. And then the big question is, are you a dog person or a cat person? Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm Melinda Sanderson. Um, oh, my husband, Gary, and I have been... Um, here in Frisco for a long time. Laura is my sister-in-law, so I'm happy to see her. And oh, okay. I haven't, I haven't gotten to see my nieces and nephew very much because of COVID, but um, it's fun to see her on here. Um, I have, we have three boys, and um, they are 17, 15, and 12, 7th, 7th, 10th, and senior so first time embarking on this senior thing um, so excited a little bit about that and he's probably more excited to be done soon than more than I am um, and I used to be a cat person and now I'm a dog person so now you know my husband kind of said that though too he's like we will never have a cat in our house again but the dog here gets everywhere too, so oh, I would like to have another dog, but he continues to say no. Do you have one dog or two? We have one dog. You have one, okay. Nice. And she's been really great, so. Good. Excellent. Nice. I'm sorry I'm late. I was on another meeting she's call. Talking. Yeah. Yes? Does someone need something? Yeah, we haven't met um, Betty. Betty's oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. yes, yes I, I said raise your hand if I miss you. Yes, Sorry. thank you. Thank I, you. I can barely hear it, any of you, but I'm Betty McCutcheon, and I'm here at the kind invitation of Carolyn to do a piggyback study of, of, uh, of uh, Ruth Precepts. Um, I have one married son. I'm a native-born Texan, have been maybe fourth, fifth generation, but I better check that out because it sounds like I might be 100 years old. Um, let's see. And um, I'm not a pet lover, but Carolyn has a very sweet, sweet little dog here. Nice. Wonderful. Okay, and tell me your first name again. Betty. Betty, okay. Attention. Okay, got it, got it, okay. Excellent. I see you now. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Betty. I'm, I'm like going through all these different papers. I got this paper, this paper. I'm looking at screens. Yeah. Wow. 
Zoom is not for the faint of heart with <laughs> distraction. So awesome. Um, did I get everybody? Did I, I, did I, I don't want to miss anybody. Um, so she has the screens flip around, but um, cool. Okay. Well, I'm, like I said, I'm really glad all of you are in the class and, and I, I have prayed for specifically who, so you are not here by accident. You are here by God's providence. So know, know that. And um, I'm excited to study with you. This is a great book. Um, so by a show of hands on the screen, how many of you, how many have the Ruth book? Like you've ordered the book and you've got it in your possession. Okay, awesome. Okay, how many, keep your hands up like this. How many of you at least um, were able to download the PDF of lesson one? I, okay, all right. Because I've got the PDF. Um, if you did not get your book, it will help you through the first lesson. Um, so that's actually what we're going to do right now. So did you break open the seal of the book yet and take a look? Uh, hopefully you did. If you haven't, that's what we're going to do right now. So go ahead and open it up. And we're actually going to walk through um, the first lesson so that you can get an idea of, of, of precepts and what we're doing. So anyway, let me grab my book so I've got it here. And I already checked, so I told you I've taught this before and your book, the cover's different and I've already double checked with the Wednesday class and our numbers will be exactly the same. Because sometimes when they redo the book, they might take out a page and I'll say, turn to page 12 and you'll be like, that's not on page 12. Well, the good news is I've already checked with the Wednesday class and we're, we're gonna be all on the same page. So pretty happy about that. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we're just going to kind of walk through this first lesson so that you can get a better feel of it and feel a little more comfortable moving forward doing the precept workbook, especially for those of you that are brand new. So you'll notice that um, the very first page is the title page. It's, it's got um, this, the title page. And then if you turn the, to the next page, it has the context and the lessons, so the good news is this is only three lessons. Um, the first lesson is what we're gonna kind of walk through today. And then um, I also, then you'll move to lesson two and then lesson three. And you do not wanna miss lesson three. Actually, you don't wanna miss any of them, to be honest, but if you've ever been interested about revelation, lesson three gives just a little tiny bit of revelation um, that's by far my favorite chapter. It just, it brings it all together. It's really good. So you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss lesson three. You don't want to miss any of them, but you definitely don't want to miss lesson three. Um, and then if you turn to the next page, you'll see she's got some helpful study tools and she actually has some recommended commentaries there for you. So again, if you're somebody that you're like, I've never really looked at a commentary, she has some suggested ones for you that you can use, um, that she uses. So that's kind of nice. Um, so then we're gonna look at page number one. And it says right there on that page, lesson one, Ruth one, chapter four. So this first lesson is what we call the overview lesson. And usually in precepts, typically the first lesson is usually the longest lesson because you're doing a lot of observations. Um, the good news for you is that Ruth is only four chapters. But if you were doing a letter that had like 18 chapters, like usually those observations, you would be doing all of those. So um, don't panic or get stressed out if you're like, oh my gosh, wow, this is really stressful. The first lesson always is the longest and takes the longest because you're doing an overview. So you're actually gonna overview all four chapters of Ruth this week. And that's what we'll do next week in our lesson is you're gonna do the homework for lesson one this week. And then when we get on Zoom on next Thursday, we're gonna actually go over the lesson and we'll have questions and they'll, there's gonna be question answers. So it won't be me just talking the whole time, but I will have some questions, some answers that for you to go back, some application questions, some time of discussion. Um, so that's kind of how the class will work. But when you look at the homework, um, she divides the homework up into five days. So 
sometimes she might put two days together. So you can see on page one, she puts day one and day two together, okay? And then if you turn the page to page number five, then you see day number three. And if you turn the page to page number seven, then you see day number four. And then if you turn the page to page number 10, you see day number five. So she divides the homework out into five days. So I would suggest you doing day one on one day, day two on another day. So since day one and day two are together, do half of it on one day, do the, the second part of it on day two, and then on day three, do day three homework on the third day, do day four homework on a fourth day, and then day five on an, the fifth day. Okay, and usually the homework should take anywhere from about, um, you know, I mean, again, I talked about slowing down, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, okay? Um, if you are brand new to presets, it'll probably take you 45, just because, again, you're, you're going to be flipping back and forth in the book. If you've done it before, it might take you 30. Again, but don't panic about that. This first lesson is the longest lesson because you're doing an overview. All right. Um, I know people that do it all in one day. It, it doesn't, you think you can, I, yeah, I know, I've known people that if they took Wednesday class, they do all their homework on Tuesday. It doesn't matter. You, you can do it. I'm just suggesting that you do it five days so that you can get into the discipline of every day being in God's word. That's just me. Um, and then I'll also just kind of say, I, I call this just um, the good, better, best is what I call it. Um, and that is if you just had a really rough week and a good thing to do would be to read through chapter, read chapter one, two, three, and four. That's good. You were in God's word this week jump onto the Zoom next week, you're gonna be good to go and you're gonna be able to follow in class. Um, a better thing would be, you know what? You read through Ruth and you got through two or three days of the homework. You maybe didn't get through all of it, but you got through two or three days. Hey, that's good. Jump on the Zoom next week. You're gonna to get to participate. You're gonna be able to follow, follow along. You're gonna be great. Um, and then the better one would be, hey, we have some weeks where it's a best week. We got all our homework done. Things were going really great. You know what? Thank God for those weeks because sometimes you don't have them. <laughs> you can go from best to good, um, but jump on that Zoom and you will be able to follow along. Are you catching my point that jump onto Zoom no matter what, okay? <laughs> That's the whole point. Um, you're, you just signed up for a Bible study which means that um, everything that's gonna happen to you is gonna happen to you on the Thursday night and during the week, because we do have an enemy. I don't know if you're aware of this, but we really do have an enemy. Um, his name is Satan, the evil one, the devil. He, you know what, he's got power, but God is more powerful than him. But here's what he likes to do. He likes to distract us. He likes to tell us, no, you know what, Denise, you didn't do your homework. You're so bad. Don't jump on that Zoom. You have nothing to offer anybody. And, and that's, not, that's not God's voice. That's the evil one's voice. So I'm saying this to encourage you um, to recognize that it is a spiritual warfare and, and that to say no to that and, and jump onto Zoom anyway. So I, I just, I wanna encourage you in that. Um, and I recognize there are times where maybe something really does happen and you're not able to make it. I totally understand that. You can come on Wednesday if you want, um, or I've got the handouts and um, you can follow along in the next lesson. Okay, everybody good with that? I just, I want you to recognize that because it, it really is legit. And seriously, because you signed up for a Bible study, yeah, whatever's gonna happen to you, yeah, it's gonna happen Thursday night. You're not gonna have dinner ready. You're gonna have dishes. Somebody's gonna call, somebody's gonna text. It, it just, it is what it is because the, the enemy does not want you to know God's word. He, he wants to distract you. So, and again, I wanna encourage you, if you didn't do your homework, please come on Zoom. You are going to get a lot out of the lesson and then just go back next week and do it. 
Um, because again, that's the enemy talking to you, telling you you're worthless and you can't contribute. And that's not what God's saying. You, you, you have much to learn jumping on this zoom and being faithful and coming in. So I want to encourage you in that. Okay. So, so let's kind of talk about, um, let's walk through what an observation worksheet would look like. So, um, I just showed you, we kind of walked through lesson one. How many of you have found the back of the book called the appendix? We're going to go to that right now. Um, the appendix is on page number 45 is where it starts. So turn over to page 45 and anytime in the homework where she says, okay, read your Ruth one observations. This is where you're going to go to is um, the appendix. So we'll kind of walk through what that looks like. So we've got Ruth chapter one. So it, we got it on page 45. Okay. And then if we turn the page to 47, there starts Ruth chapter two, the observation sheets. And then if we move over to page 51, then we see Ruth chapter three and those observation sheets. And then if we move over to page 53, there's Ruth chapter four. So those are our observation sheets. Now, if you turn the page, you're gonna say, whoa, wait a minute, hold on. On page 57, I've got Leviticus 25, one through 28. Well, that's gonna be a cross-reference that we're gonna look at in lesson two, when we look at the duties of a kinsman redeemer. So in that lesson, when she says, hey, turn to your observation sheets in the appendix on Leviticus 25, then you know this is where you're going, okay? Um, there may be other times in the homework where she'll say, look up this verse, and she'll give you the verse, and she'll give you some space in the homework, then that means it's not in the appendix. You're just gonna go ahead and look up that verse in your, in your Bible or on an iPad or a phone and, and write the scripture down or write a summary of it, okay? So not every verse is going to be in the appendix. But when she's really focusing in on um, certain parts of interpretation, then you'll see those in the appendix. So I wanted to kind of highlight that for you. Um, so we'll, so just so that you know that, okay? So let's go back for a minute, kind of keep your finger on Ruth observation sheet chapter um, one on page 45. Kind of keep your hand there for a minute and let's go back to the first lesson and we're gonna walk through how to, how to do this observation, how to ask ourselves these questions and, and how to mark. Cause that's probably the biggest thing when people do precepts is, is the marking. People get really hung up on this and it's really not something to be hung up on. What it's really doing is it's helping you in the observation. So if you looked at the back of your workbook, um, your workbook has, it looks like this. It's got some little um, pictures in there. Did anybody notice those little symbols? Okay. Did anybody panic? The ones you can't read? Yeah. Um, did anybody panic when you saw those and were like, do I have to make those? Yeah, nod your head if you panicked, it's okay. Um, you do not have to mark like this at all. She's just showing you a way to do it, okay? So that's what I mean by getting hung up on the marking. So a lot of people get really hung up on this and they're like, but I didn't make the squiggly line and I, I didn't have this color. And that's, if you're doing that, you're missing the point, right? Because the point of observation is you're looking for repeated words and phrases, okay? So I don't want you to get hung up on that. I want you to be free to mark or not mark as you so choose, but I wanna guide you and let you know that if you're somebody that you kinda like the marks, here's some suggestions for you in the back of the book, but you don't have to do it that way, okay? I will tell you that marking is very beneficial because I'm kind of strange and, and I've done enough precepts now that I have certain words that I mark. So I'm gonna give you an example. I, the word redeem is really big in this book of Ruth. I mark it in pink. And I, I have to tell you, every time I see that word in scripture or I see it in a song 
or I see it in a sermon, my mind goes immediately to my pink highlight. I can tell you exactly where those are in scripture because I've marked it and I observed it. So I share that with you so you can know that observing words and marking them really does help you in the observation and helps you in learning those words and those terms, okay? Okay, so let's talk about, so in this first lesson on page number one, um, if we read it, she says where the little A is, it says, mark every reference to Ruth in one color and every reference to Naomi in another color. Okay, do you see that? And then in B, she says, carefully mark any reference to time. And then in C, she says, double underline in green. Oh, see, she actually gives you a, a, a choice. Oh, double underline in green. You don't have to do that. You don't. Um, but she gives you a suggestion if you want. Um, any geographical references? Again, the Denise, reason. Denise, yeah. Denise, what you're reading, I don't have in my workbook. I only have the A says Ruth and Naomi. And then it says reference time, but then in C, it doesn't say anything about lines and all of that. Oh, does it say to um, mark a geographical reference? It says geographical locations, asterisk, so that you know where the events take place. Perfect. And then okay. it locate them on the map. It doesn't Excellent. say anything about double lines or anything like that. Okay, good. She probably took that out of her new version so she won't confuse you. I have an old version. Our version's like from... 2000, I think. So thank you, Barbara. Um, okay, so let's, let's go through the Ruth observation sheet and we're gonna walk through this together, how we would mark it, okay? So you can do, you can get a pencil. Um, and the way we're just gonna do this is um, we're gonna walk through the first couple verses and I'm just gonna kind of show you how, how you would look for those observations, okay? Everybody good? Okay, so we're gonna to turn to page 45, and we're gonna start reading. When I see a reference to Naomi or Ruth, I'm gonna go ding, 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 meaning, oh, I'm supposed to mark that. When I see a reference to time, I'm gonna go, oh, ding, 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 oh, that, that's time. Or if I see a geographical location, I'm gonna go ding, 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 that, that's time as well, okay? So, so that way we can kind of walk through the homework together. Okay, so let's look at page 45 and the observation sheets. Okay, so here's what it says. Now it came about in the days when the judges governed, ding, 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 there's some time right there because it just told me in the days when the judges governed, so I'm getting a time frame, that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah, ding, 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 there's a place, Bethlehem, went to sojourn in the land of Moab. Ding, 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 there's another place, okay? With his wife and his two sons. Do I know the name of the wife yet? Not yet, but I'm gonna keep going. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife was Naomi, up, oh, ding, 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 there we go. So Naomi, we're gonna mark in some way. You, you can decide. So now do we know who his wife's name is? We do. So yeah, you can mark wife. So we now know, there, there's Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilion. Aphrodites, ding, 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 of Bethlehem and Judah, ding, ding, ding. There are some more locations for you. Now, they entered the land of Moab. Ding, 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 there's another place. And remained there. Ding, ding, because they remained in that place in Moab. <laughs> then, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, there we go, Naomi, died. And she was left with her two sons. So the who's the she? It's Naomi. So we want to, we want to, we want to mark her because that's Naomi. We want to mark the pronouns too that go with her. And they took for themselves Moabite women 
as wives. The name of one was Orpha, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they lived there about 10 years. Ding, ding. There we go. There's a time reference, 10 years. So right off the bat, we're, we're being told that here's a time frame for us. Okay? All right. Then we're going to go to verse 5. Then both Malon and Chilion also died, and the women were bereft of her two children and her husband. Who's the woman? Naomi. Yeah, so we want to mark her. All right, now you'll notice six in your observation sheet. It's a little black, dark six. So she's telling us there's a new segment. Remember how we talked about segment divisions and I said, oh, you're gonna, you don't have to figure it out. She tells you. <laughs> she puts a nice black, a, a very bold number there. So we're gonna get into a new segment here. Then she rose with her daughter-in-laws that she might, who's the she that we're talking about? It's Naomi, yep, it's Naomi. That she might return from the land of Moab. Okay, there we go, another place. For she had heard in the land of Moab that the Lord had visited his people in giving them food. Okay? Okay, so you see how we went through and we, we marked? All right, we were also supposed to mark um, Ruth. So did you find Ruth when we read in chapter, in verse four, did you see Ruth? Good. So you want to mark her as well. So those were the two we were told. Okay. Okay. Is this helpful? Okay. We're going to, we're going to keep going. Okay. Through this chapter. So again, we, we're just going to kind of walk it through. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go down to verse seven. So she, who's the she? It's Naomi. Okay, she departed from the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. Okay, ding, ding, there's another place. And Naomi, ding, ding, there we go, said to her two daughter-in-laws, go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Who's the me? It's Naomi, yep. That the Lord grant that you may find rest and eat in the house of her husband. Then she, Naomi, kissed them and they lifted up their voices and they wept. Okay, so I always get the question, well, the they, Ruth, would be included in that, right? <laughs> in the they, so you would want to mark that. Okay, and then they said to her, no, but we shall surely return with you and your people. But Naomi said, there we go, ding, 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 return my daughters, why should you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb? that they may be your husbands. Return my daughters, go for I, who's the I? It's Naomi, I am old, I'm too old to have a husband. And if I say I have hope, if I should even have a husband tonight and also bear sons, would you therefore wait until they were grown? And would you refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it's harder for me than for you for the hand of the Lord has gone forth against me. And they lifted up their voices and they wept again. Okay. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but who's that? Ruth. So we're going to mark her. Ruth clung to her. Who's the her? It's Naomi. Yep. Then she said, behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. So the she talking at first is Naomi. And who's she talking to? She's talking to Ruth. So we want to make sure we mark her and your with Ruth. But here's verse 16. But Ruth said, 
do not urge me to leave you or turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Oh, we got a lot of pronouns here. <laughs> okay, so we see Ruth and Naomi dialoguing here. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. Thus may the Lord do to me and worse, if anything but death parts you and me. When she, Naomi, saw that she, who's that she? That's Ruth, yep, was determined to go with her. She said no more to her. So they, now who's the they? That's both of them. Yeah, that's Ruth and Naomi. They both went until they came to Bethlehem. There we go. Ding, ding. There's a place. And when they had come to Bethlehem, there's that place again, all the city was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? And she said to them, do not call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why do you call me Naomi? So we got a lot of Naomi markings here. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Every time we got Naomi. Since the Lord has witnessed against me and the Almighty has afflicted me. So Naomi returned and with her Ruth, the Moabitess. So there's our two words. Ding, ding her daughter-in-law, who returned from the land of Moab. So now we know where they came from. They came from Moab to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Okay, ding, 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 that's a big one. Yeah, because that's, that's some sort of a time at the beginning of the barley harvest. What is that? Well, I'm not gonna ruin it for you. You're gonna get to study that in a, in a little bit, but you're gonna find out what's significant about being there during the barley harvest, okay? Awesome. Okay. So now y'all can unmute yourself for a minute so we can kind of have a little bit of a dialogue here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So was that helpful to go through that? And you can just see, and you're just kind of, you're going through and you're marking and she's telling you what to mark. Um, and you're just marking those. Okay. Right. And again, we, so if we were to kind of summarize, um, who the main characters are in chapter one, who do you think they are? Naomi. <laughs> Ruth and Naomi, why do you know that? Because we went through and marked them. <laughs> because you marked it a whole lot, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. And so where did they, um, where did the setting of the story Especially start? Naomi. Naomi even more than Ruth. And exactly. Yeah. Chapter. Naomi for sure was a very main character. <laughs> yeah. We also kind of found out, so where did the story start? Where, where did they start in chapter one? Well, they started in Bethlehem and then they went to Moab. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it started in Bethlehem. They went to Moab. And then by the end of the chapter, what happens? They went back. They, went back to Bethlehem. they go back to Bethlehem. How do you know that? Because it. it says it. It's the office. You marked it. That's right. That's why she's having you mark it. And you saw it several times. We saw a time frame. What's the time frame going to be um, according to chapter one? Ten, ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. And then we see this really interesting harvest um, that we're told about this barley harvest. So that's got to be important. So that's why we're marking it. We don't know yet what that is, but we're going to learn what, what that is in the next few weeks and we'll cross reference. So you'll know what that is, okay? Okay, um, right. yeah. So let's keep going for a little bit. So turn the page then to page number two. Okay, all right. So on page two, it says, I hope I'm reading it. It says, um, now list all the characters mentioned in this first chapter, okay? Right. So right. We're, we're all gonna write this together. So what are some of the characters that we met in the first chapter? Elimelech. Elimelech, okay. 
Naomi. Their two sons. Okay, yeah, Naomi. Malon and Chilean. You got it. The two sons, Malon and Chilean. Okay. Orpha and Ruth. And then Orpha and Ruth. Good. Okay, so go ahead and write, write their names. Okay, now I'm going to see if I can get my screen share here so I can show you how to look up their names. I hope it works because it wasn't working a minute ago. Let's see if I can get it to work. Um, oh, here we go. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm getting into my account for you all. Oh my gosh, you're all gonna know my birthday too, isn't that great? Um, <laughs> awesome, sweet. I'm doing this so I can show you how to use the, um, the Net Bible. Uh, awesome, and you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna see how old I am too, which is gonna be really great. I can't see it. Oh, I'm sure I'm so older. I'm sure I'm so older than you, Denise. <laughs> All good. Okay. I don't see anything much. You still not seeing anything yet? I can't connect to the, the no, Google we Drive. See any of okay. Your okay, here yeah. we go. Yay. Awesome. No, we don't see anything. You don't oh. see anything? Boo. Okay, hold on. I mean, I, we see the connect to Google Drive. That's what we, we see. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this right now. Share screen. We see a different window that you've shared. Okay. The link. There we go. Now let's try it. Nope. No. Are you connected? Because there we go. Do you see this? No. No. Oh man. <laughs> All we can see is connect to Google Drive. That's it. Has okay. anybody clicked connect on that? I no. did, but it doesn't First work. Screen. I did. First screen, so we can't do it. Okay. Denise, we see a browser that has four Zoom tags. Tabs open and one of the tabs that we're seeing says connect to Google Drive. Got it. Okay. Um, You've shared a different browser. I guess I did. Yeah, hold on. Let me um let me click But on it. the top of my screen it says you are viewing Denise Shager's screen. Screen. But I'm not. Yeah. Okay. No, because your screen says something else, right, Denise? I mean just unshare and then reshare, but when before you do like you'll get all your list of screens and click on the one you want us to see and then hit share. Okay. So do new share? I'd say unshare or, or stop share. Yeah, stop share. Okay. And then when you push share again, you should get a whole list of like other windows you might have open. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay, you uh, see it now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks, Melinda, the technology queen that she is. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so this is what I wanted to get to was this. Okay, so this is the website that I was talking about um, that I love to do when you're going to look up word studies. Um, how many of you have ever, I've taken a class where you had to use the concordance, that big old book, and you got to flip back and forth. Anybody ever right. use that? Okay. Yeah, this, what a pain. This, okay, it is such a pain. You're right. <laughs> this is so much easier. So this is literally with a click. You get to touch the word with your browser and you can see what the word means. It's, it's beautiful. So this is the website. Um, and so I'm going to click it. Yay. So this is what the screen will look like when you go to it. This is called Net Bible. And again, it won't work on your mobile device if you're using it on your phone. You've got to be on a computer or an iPad. If, you are an, if you're an app person on your phone, use the blue letter app. It'll work the same way. Okay. Then what you're going to do is go to menu and you're going to go to classic version. Okay. Don't go to mobile version. It won't do anything. You've got to go to classic. You click it. Okay. Okay. Yay. And then here you go. Here's... Here's the screen. So I'm going to go to Display Bible, and I'm going to go to the Book of Ruth. So I'm going to scan up here to Ruth, okay? And I'm going to go to Chapter 1, all right? And so in my question on the homework, it asks me to look up the names of these characters in a concordance. So here's the <coughs> 
coordinates we're going to use. So let's look and see um, when is Elimelech used? What what um, what verse is our first character Elimelech um, named? Two. Verse two. Okay, so I'm going to go here to chapter one, verse two, and I'm going to push go. <gasps> look at that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and look, all I got to do is um, touch Elimelech, click it, and you're gonna write down, so we're actually, you're gonna get some homework done today. What does Elimelech mean, his name? My God, God is king. king. My God is king. So go ahead and write that down. And names are really important, um, especially all through scripture, but even our own names are really important, right? So. Um, this is why we're looking these up, is names. That's, that's funny because on my concordance, that his name says God of the King. Yeah, that, that's a similar, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it also says strength. Mm hmm yeah. Okay. And it says here it's Naomi's husband, so yeah. Okay, so okay. the next one we're going to look at is um, Naomi. Yeah. So let's look up hers. Okay, so I'm going to put my browser on there. I'm going to click it. Okay, and there we go. What does Naomi's name mean? Oh, my, my delight. delight. My delight. Yeah, so go ahead and write that down. What is it? It's my, my delight. delight. Mm -hmm. And then we get some information too. We find out she's the wife of Elimelech. She's the mother of Malon and Chilean, and she's the mother-in-law of Ruth and Ortha. So we get some more information right. about her, okay? All right. Okay, so let's do, I'm gonna go back now. Um, let's go to about the two sons. Let's find out their names. So let's go to Malon first. So I'm gonna put my browser there, I'm gonna click it. Okay, what does Malon? Sick. It means <laughs> sick, huh? <sighs> Now, isn't that interesting? Because what happens to him in chapter he one? He dies. He dies, yeah. Yeah. And we also look at the definition here, and it says that he's the son of Elimelech by Naomi, and he's the first husband of Ruth. Now, mm -hmm. you'll actually find that information in chapter four. You'll actually find out, because we don't find out in chapter one who's married to whom, but we do find out in chapter four that Ruth is the one who was married to Malon. So if you want to write right. that in there, you can. If not, no big deal. But kind of interesting. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click back. And now let's look at Chilean. And let's find out what his name means. Okay. Pine. What does his name mean? Pining. Pining. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, some versions <laughs> say like frail or sickly. Um, I've also seen that as well. Um, someone in the Wednesday class, when they looked, um, they said it said um, frail. Isn't that interesting? Because what happens to Chilean in chapter one? Yeah, he dies as well. He dies as well. Yeah. So we find okay. out that um, he's the son of Elimelech by Naomi um, as well. So, and he's the deceased, he may be the deceased husband of Orpha. Right. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and click back. And um, when do we see, so we've got Elimelech, we've got Naomi, we've got our two sons. Who else do we need to look up? Ruth. Ruth, Ruth. okay, so when do we see her name first? Four. Um, what verse? Two. Four. Verse four. four. Okay, four. so what I'm gonna do is I'm staying here in Ruth chapter one. I'm just gonna click the two and I'm gonna move it to four. And then I'm going to push go. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to look for Orpha. Let's find out what her name means. So I just take my browser. I click it. Ah, what does Orpha mean? Gazelle. Gazelle. Uh-huh. Some people also got um, back of the neck yes. as well. Oh my which isn't that interesting because what happens in chapter one, what does Orpha do? Turns around. Hi. Turns around. Oh. Turns around and she goes back to Moab. Yeah, it's very interesting. So, okay. And again, we learned that she's a Moabite woman. She's the wife of Chilean. Um, so, sister-in-law of Ruth. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna go back again, and now let's look up Ruth. Okay, so I'm gonna take my browser, I'm gonna click. All right, and what does Ruth's name mean? Friendship. Friendship. Yeah, friendship. So you can write that in your homework page. And we learned she's the daughter-in-law of Naomi. And she's the wife of Boaz. Okay, have we right. met Boaz yet? No. no. No, so he must be coming in another chapter. We just did chapter one together. But in your homework, you're going to go through all four chapters. Okay, and we learned that she's uh, the grandmother of David. Okay? Right. Yeah. So that, that's when, when she has you look up words, I would encourage you to use the net Bible like we did, this netbible.org. Um, it makes it so much easier than flipping through. Yeah. This with yeah. Just touch. Yeah. Denise, uh, yes. Denise, excuse me, you said that on the Blue Letter Bible, there was a way to do word study? There is. It's an app, though. Um, I know, and I have it on my tablet, and I was wondering, I can't seem to find how to do a word study on it. Okay. That well, app. yeah, so I, I gave you that one for the app people. I would encourage you to use the oh, Bible <laughs> one, <laughs> just because that's the one I use. Um, my daughter okay. likes that one. She, she's the one that talks about the blue. She uses the blue letter one. Um, I can play around with that one and get back to you um, if, if you're interested in using them. Okay. App. Okay. Um, but um, for, for today, I wanted to show how to use the Net Bible because that's the one. That's the one I personally am drawn to because it's really easy. Because um, yeah, you just have to click it. But I'll, I'll research the, the, um, the other one for you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, um, Denise, and then, yes. I, I can tell you how to do the Blue Letter Bible one. Oh, please do. If you want me to, to run that through that real fast. Yeah. Or you want me to just wait. Um, who else wants to, who likes the Net Bible and who wants the Blue Letter? Are most people Net? Let me see what time it is, hold on. Okay, hey, you know what we'll do is after class, any, anybody who's interested, stay on the, the chat and then I'll have you do it, Carol. How's that? Okay. That's perfect, yeah. So anybody who wants to know how to use that app, when we're done, um, stay on the call and then um, Carol will walk you through that. Because I, I want to hear it too, because I, <laughs> I haven't done the blue letter, I've only done the net. Thank okay. you for walking us through this, Denise. I wish I had this when I was taking my um, Bible interpretation class. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. This, well, I mean, I'm using the net Bible, but I didn't know how to do the, the word studies like what you've shown. Like I only use oh. like the notes and stuff. Cool. So. Hey, and if you call, if you do that, I'm, if you do, if you, <laughs> when you go to do your homework, you're like, what in the world was she talking about? I can't even get on. Um, that sheet that I, I gave you with the um, calendar, it has my phone number and email. Um, feel free. You can give me a call or two. Oh, I didn't copy that. <laughs> yeah, um, copy that. And have my phone number and email. Call or text me anytime between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. If you text me at 2 a.m., I'll get it the next morning and, and text you back at 7. But um, I'm, I'm here to help you. So if, if, like, you start doing this, you're like, what was she talking about? I can walk mm -hmm. you through it like we did, okay? I, I really want this to be a good resource for you where you can use it no matter, again, no matter what study um, you do, because this I, I use this for any study that I'm doing. There's one other word that she wants you to look up. And so since we're already in Net Bible, we're gonna go ahead and look at it. Um, and that okay. is on, on page three of your homework, look at letter E at the very top. And she talks about looking at this, there's a map, okay? She's like, now look at where this first chapter is. Trace the journey on your map. Hmm, what map? Well, she, at the put, end of the she put it in your homework. It's on page number 13. So that's the map she's talking about on page 13. So she likes maps, because again, we talked about geographical locations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what she's talking about. And then that's question number one. Then question number two, it says, look up the meaning of Bethlehem and record right. it here. Okay, so we're gonna do that on the Net Bible here on this, on this um, site. So where did we see the word Bethlehem? Where was that? 
I think it's verse one. Oh, verse one. Okay, yeah, verse one. Yeah, we see it quite a bit, but verse one for sure. So I'm going to stay in chapter one of Ruth, and I'm going to go back to chapter to verse one, and I'm going to push go. Okay, and then I'm going to look for Bethlehem. Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to click Bethlehem. All right. Bread. And what yeah. does Bethlehem mean? House, House of bread. bread. House of bread. So you're going to go ahead and write that in in your homework. House of Bread. Now, isn't that interesting? Because the bread what, happened in, what happened in chapter one as we were reading and observing? There was no bread. <laughs> there was a famine, right? They there left the bread. House of Bread to go somewhere else. So, hmm, mm -hmm. something must have happened. Are we told yet why? Not yet, but again, these are the five W and the H questions that I'm asking myself. Okay, so that's interesting. Bethlehem's called the house of bread, and yet there was no bread. So something must have happened. Hmm, I wonder what that is. Well, I'm not told yet what that is, but I am going to be told that later in the story, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. so anyway, yeah, so that, that kind of gets you through the first day one and two of your homework, of, of some things um, that uh, can help you out. So anyway, I do hope oh. that that was very helpful for you. It was um, helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was very helpful. Um, I kind of made a connection. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus was born in Bethlehem and he's right. the yeah. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> nice, good observation, oh. absolutely, yep. Yeah, again, that's what's great about studying inductively is you're learning the truth for yourself. Someone didn't tell you that. You're like, oh, at Bethlehem is house of bread. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Jesus, because you're, right. you're connecting what scripture is teaching you. You're letting scripture interpret scripture. That's what I love about um, doing inductive Bible study is it, it gets you to, to think and, and um, make those connections. So awesome. Cool. Um, okay, did anybody, I'm, I'm going to close out of this screen. Did anybody else want me to walk through anything? You know, are you good with this? Did, did you start out though in Bible.com or Bible.org and I, then go to the. I know, net? I'll show you. Yes, ma'am. So let me show yes. you what I did. Okay, so walk you through this. Okay, oh. when you log on to the screen, this is what you're going to see first. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you have to go to the menu button. I, see. I don't yeah. know who's in IT here who can tell me why do people ruin really good sites? But it used to be this, that original site that used to be it and then they updated it. And I don't know why they did it, but it doesn't do all the things that it used to do. <laughs> so oh. that's why I said, you're going to click menu and you're going to go to classic version because this used classic to be version. the classic version. Don't do this one. It's not going to do what you need to do. Go to classic, click it, and then there you are. Then you okay. find um, the book that you want. Right. So you go up right, to right. Ruth, mm -hmm. okay, okay. I'm in chapter one. You can push out right. if you want, go, and it'll send you to the whole thing. And then right. what's nice is you can even click and go, you know what, I just want to look at, I just want to look at verse seven. You just can click that, and then there it goes. And right. then you, can move, you can move around into it. Okay. Okay. All right. So you've already got half of day one and two homework done because we did some of it already. Oh, yeah. Yay. So now, now you'll do that and you'll move around in the homework with um, chapter two of Ruth. Then you'll do chapter three and then you'll do chapter four. You'll do an overview and you'll just follow her questions. Sometimes they might seem repetitive. And what she's just doing is she's just getting you to think. Okay. And um, so don't, don't panic on that. All right. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this out so I can see everybody for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna stop, share. There we go, perfect, <coughs> okay. Um, so yeah, so the, there you go. You just did almost most of day one and two, and then you just got three, four, and five to do this week until we meet again next Thursday. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm here for a resource and an encouragement and a help. So if you jump on this week and you're like, how did she, what, where was she getting that site? Give me a call and we'll, 
we'll walk through, we could even zoom it and walk through it together, okay? So, um, and then if you do want to use or understand the Blue Letter app, when we're done here, I'm going to close this out in prayer. Um, you can stay on the call and I'll have um, Carol kind of walk you through the Blue Letter app if any of you are interested in that. Um, if you're not, then you can leave and leave. Thank you. Right. Next week. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, so let me um, close this out in prayer. And um, yeah, we'll get you on. We're all probably ready for bed because. It's oh, I need to go to dinner. <laughs> I'm eating I dinner. If, if you've done precepts before, she usually has videos. I don't do the videos, just FYI. We will discuss it and I will incorporate her video and parts of it within the lesson. So you won't miss okay. it. If you're like a huge video person, you can go onto precept and you can download the MP3s and listen to it yourself. That's right. I just make that choice as a leader because we're in a digital age now and you've got a lot of resources that you right. can do that on your own. So I figure Great. we all want the discussion. Um, so that, that's kind of why. Yeah. So anyway, just, just in case you've done precepts in the past and she's like, where's the video? I, I don't do them. So, okay. But let me close this in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for um, just making your word come alive and the great things that we have learned already in Ruth chapter one, um, as we observed um, Elimelech and, and Naomi and Ruth and, and Lord, I just, I pray for these ladies. I pray Lord um, that you just enlarge their time and energy this week as they um, work through your word and they work through um, Ruth's chapter one through four. Uh, just make it exciting and alive for them. Just allow mm -hmm. your Holy Spirit to infuse them and encourage them and teach them and help eliminate any distractions, help them to say no to those and just find some sweet time with you this week. And um, I just pray for each one of them and, and pray Lord for um, the rest of this week and the weekend and that we will all um, be back next Thursday and just get a rich time to talk about these chapters together as a group, Lord. Thank you so much. Um, I just, I praise you and I thank you for your word and, and for these ladies and for their dedication of, of desiring to study your word inductively. So, um, Again, thank you, and, and we just praise you, and um, I just give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Denise. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you later. Thank you. So any of you that want to stay on for a few more minutes, Carol will um, go through the blue letter. If not, um, I'll see you next week, okay? Happy uh, Saturday. Okay. Carol, <laughs> Carol, I'm staying with you. I'm going to listen to you because I, I, I don't. I don't know how to use it, so. Okay. Nothing. Yeah. So when you go into your um, to the Blue Letter Bible app, you're going to choose between um, whether you want to do the New Testament or the Old Testament. You'll go to Ruth. Then, if you choose chapter one, if you look down to verse two, where we where we see Elimelech. If you touch on the name Elimelech, it's going to bring up some choices. Um, there's interlinear, in the interlinear concordance, translations, um, cross-references, and all that. So th those are choices that you have um, once you've touched the name of Elimelech. So if you um, go on ahead and touch the interlinear um, concordance that <coughs> brings up the verse down below. Um, you know, it, it gives you the Hebrew text, it gives you the Hebrew interlinear, and then it goes into the English and it breaks it up into the words, um, into phrases. So the first phrase is the name. And the Hebrew Wait, word for that is Can I is just Shem. stop you one second, Carol? Uh-huh. Okay. So you said you hit Elimelech, and then what's the next thing you do? Okay. So once I've touched Elimelech, then you should see a screen that comes up looking kind of like... Yeah, I see all the different choices. I do. Okay. And then what do you so do? So choose that first one. Interlinear? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. 
Now, what's going to come up, you're going to see Hebrew, you're going to see the interlinear, and you're going to see phrases. Do you nice. see that? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to go down to where it references Elimelech. Okay. Okay. Can you, can you find that part way down? And actually, I've kind of scrolled. So here's okay. Elimelech's name. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I touch that. Yes. Yep. That's going to bring up the transliteration, the pronunciation, the um, usage. It gives the um, definition. Does it give the meaning? Oh, it does. Yep. It gives the meaning of his name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Do you see, see that? Yeah. Okay. So there's a bunch of stuff in there. So quite honestly, I, I've not used the net one, but that is, it, that's an awesome. It's I mean, beautiful, that looks isn't so it? But you have to be on a computer. You can't use your phone. Which is why so I can do that. But you can do it on that. You can do it on an iPad, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I you can. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah, you can do Net Bible on an iPad. Yeah, it just you can't do it on a mobile device. Um, you have to be in the internet type thing. It can't. Yeah, it's not an app. Right. Yeah. Okay. So That's to awesome. be honest, I. Um, you know, I have Letter Bible on my phone and I use it if I'm, you know, away from my computer. But what you were showing us tonight, that is so slick that if I had, you know, access to the computer, that's what I would use first okay. and foremost. This is a lot more convoluted. Okay. Yeah, and that's okay. why I use Net Bible and not an app. But, um, but thank you because I didn't really know how to use it. So that, that was really helpful. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. Does anybody You're else welcome. have a question? I was gonna say, Carol. Carol is our um, our our professor here for this one. Anybody else have a question for her? <laughs> that, that was great. Anybody have a question for her? No, that was good. Thank you. All right. Yay. Well, it's good to see everybody. I have missed seeing all your faces. This is really fun to okay. actually see people. <laughs> But you do such a good job with the um, online uh, one, saying hi to everybody, and I, oh. I, lo I love that. I miss you I, so much. I enjoy doing it. I really do. Yeah. So. Good. All right. Okay. Well, right. Um, thank you, Carol. And uh, yeah, if you don't have any other questions, I guess we'll all sign off, and um, we'll see you next week. Okay, bye everybody. Yeah, happy studying. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. You're welcome.